What a mad game. What was that? What was that from Zakani? What was that? Yo, 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 yo. We literally seconds to go. Croatia thought they were in second place. Italy were going to need a miracle to qualify for the round of 16. They had they still had good chances, but they were, they were going to need a miracle. And then steps up Zakani. The man from Lazio. I'd never heard of you before this game. I'm not even gonna lie. It was people in the lives. Shout out to everyone in the lives, by the way. They're the ones who watch a lot of Syria and they're telling me yo Zakani needs to come on and start crossing the ball. Him or El Sharawi. I can't remember who said it. Someone said it. I either James Neritu or Abdul, one of those guys, one of our regulars on TikTok Live. Anyway, that game was insane. Zakani, last minute equalizer that now sends Italy through to the round of 16. Again, if Croatia won, if if they held on 1-0, they would have had uh, four points and they would be one of the two automatic qualifiers and Italy would be in trouble. They would need a big, big result from Slovenia. They would need England to beat Slovenia by at least four goals and hope that uh, Czechia also don't do anything. But, but, who is Zakani? Calafiori, the man from Bologna. This boy needs to, he's going to get a big money move. Again, uh, top young players of the tournament, he has to be up there. Him, Lamin Yamal, uh, definitely they're going to sneak in Jude Bellingham there. And who else am I forgetting? I'm forgetting someone. But yeah, that this boy has been insane. He's the one who takes the ball up from the back, just driving in defense, gives it to Fratesi, takes back the one-two, lays it off for Zakani, and Zakani slots in that amazing color in the corner. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the goal in 2006 World Cup when they won. I, who was that? Who was that? Who scored? Who scored in the 206 World Cup? He's a fullback. I need to remember his name. Um, yeah, but all in all, like Calafiori is like the boy is just a leader. You can just see in how he plays, right? Like he has that, he has aura. He has aura <laughs> at the back there. I, I need to get this guy's name because otherwise it's going Fabio Grosso. Shout out to Fabio Grosso. He used to play in uh, the Italian team. So, yeah, man, this game was a bit weird in that. Uh, Italy looked like they were getting, they were going to get chances, but they really didn't get chances. Croatia were dominating early in the first half. It was just a bit of a, a bit of a, a struggle really for either team to get into the game. Uh, Susic had an amazing shot that Donnarumma saved. That was one of the highlights of the first half. And uh, Italy decided to start up front with Retagi, Retegi rather, and he had a nice header was that was quite just wide. Um, I was quite surprised by his movement. He has. In terms of movement, I feel like he has much better movement than Skamaka up front. But his hold-up play was, is still not Skamaka's level. So going forward, I don't know what Spalletti starts with. Do you start with uh, someone who's played there a bit more proven in Skamaka or do you go with um, Retegi? <clears throat> then in the 26th minute, Bastoni had a header. He was open, open in the box. The ball was floated back in from a corner and he headed straight, almost straight at the goalkeeper. Livakovic makes a good save. Makes a good save and yeah... That was more or less everything that happened in the in the first half. Then we get to the second half. This is where the, all the drama began. So in the 53rd minute, I think, 52nd minute, no, earlier on, 51st, somewhere there, because the goal comes in the 54th. We have, um, I think it was Fratesi. I want to say it was Fratesi who had come on for Di Marco. Di Marco was a bit ineffective. I thought him playing a bit higher because, as I said, even in the prediction, Di Marco has been our threat going forward all this tournament at, from left back. So seeing him go, play a bit higher in the starting lineup, I was like, okay, this is dope. Like, I really want to see more of this. But yeah, it was it was a bit of an average performance. So him getting subbed off was warranted. So anyway, Fratis is in the D. There's a shot that comes in. But the way he defends, he puts his arm in the air and then the ball comes off his right hand. And they go to VR. Ref is called to the monitor and it's a penalty. It's an obvious penalty. So yeah, they give the penalty. Modric takes the penalty and everyone, some people in the level are like, yo, Donnarumma is going to save this. And others are like, yo, Donnarumma always has a mistake in him. And Donnarumma saves the penalty. So we are like, we're all hyped. We're all hyped. Donnarumma saved the penalty. And then these guys just decide. Like, literally, the, goals, the ball comes out. And then it comes back. I don't know what Bastoni is doing. Budimir was going after, I think it was Bastoni, actually, for the initial shot. Donnarumma saves it, but he just saves it into... Uh, sorry, into Luka Modric's path. And Modric does well, so well to shoot with his left foot and put it in the top corner or the top of the net and make it one nil. And he was so emotional. Even as he was celebrating, you could see tears in his eyes. 
But the fact that you guys consider goal literally like a minute and a half after he saves the penalty, the ball doesn't even go out. Modric doesn't even attack that much. He's still in the box. Like that. How that's how soon it was from the penalty save. And Modric manages to get uh, them one nil up. The he's the oldest player to score with at uh, 38 years and 113 days or something like that, or 39 days, something like that. So he's the oldest goal scorer in the Euros, but he did so well to get back into that position and give his team a one nil lead. The rest of the time now they were just defending. Italy uh, brought on a few changes here and there. Skamaka was brought on as well. So they were playing with two up front. They were not creating that many chances. The only one that I could remember is when Kiesa also came in. Kiesa crossed the ball and Skamaka was just like a foot from getting to the ball. So the ball just goes across goal. And those were only those were the only the, those were the only chances that Italy were creating. We were not creating quality chances up until like the last minutes of the game, right? When Finally, the ball comes to Calaf- Calafiori. Shout out to Calafiori. And actually, our two, I think he had two crosses in this game, or one cross and one kind of crossfield ball in the final third. And both of them were accurate, two feet. One to chest, one to feet. He was the best crosser in the game. He was the best defender in the game. Had the game-winning assist. Like, Calafiori to me was the best player, Italian player on the field today. So, yeah, he drives, gets the ball, He's driving, he's, he passes the ball to Fratesi, he gets fouled. And then Fratesi passes back to him, just the one touch. He manages to lay it off to the oncoming Zakani, the Lazio <laughs> player, to take it to the top corner and give my boys a 1-1 one, one draw. I've never celebrated a draw like this. And that means that now Croatia move into, 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 into third place in the group and amongst the best place, third place teams, they are now in fifth place, which means they need a big, big loss. Um, they need Slovenia to lose to England. Let's start there. And if they do, then Czechia not to do anything. Not to do anything. Because if Czechia even get a point, Croatia out. So Croatia need two big results to go through. They need a Czechia loss and they need a Slovenia loss, heavy loss to have any hope of qualifying. If England win 3-0, Slovenia will still will still have lost. They'll have conceded more, but they'll have scored less. So Croatia will still go through because of goal, goal scored. But they'll be tied on goal difference and they'll be tied on points. So a 3-0 win for England works for Slovenia. A 3-1 win for England doesn't works for Croatia. 3-1 win does not work. But 4-0, 5-0, 6-0, 7-0 also works in Croatia's favor. So they're going to hope that Gareth Southgate's men... <laughs> Gareth Southgate's men can put four past Slovenia. What a game. What a game. See you tomorrow. We're live for both games tomorrow. The Spain, uh, the England game at 10 p.m. and uh, the France, the group France, Netherlands, Austria, Poland group at 7 p.m. So from 6.45. Peace.